Okay, so finishing up on section 10.3 with ellipses, this is day two. Uh, we're looking at ellipses today that don't have a center at the origin. We've transformed them or shifted them to some point HK that is um, on the inside of the ellipse. That would be our new center. This information inside the box is the same information that's down here, and I think this is a little bit easier to understand, where we have the, uh, the long ellipse with the major axis that is now parallel to the x-axis because we have a shift of h and k units. Because this is the major axis, this is our A value, it's the bigger value, and it goes under the A part of the equation. On this side, we have this uh, tall ellipse, and the major axis is now parallel to the Y axis after you apply the shift. The big part, the big number, is A squared. It goes underneath the Y part of the equation. And then just the H and K, are the values that will tell us where that center is. So in example five, um, it's asking us to find an equation of the ellipse with the center at two negative three, so I just labeled that, a focus at three negative three, and a vertex at five negative three. So the best thing to do is just um, get an idea of what we're looking at here, and my center is over two, down three. My center, my foci is at three, negative three. So it's the foci. And my vertice, one of my vertices is at five, negative three. This gives us a lot of information. We know that it's going to be a long parabola, or ellipse, I can't get parabola out of my mind. It's a long ellipse because my center, foci, and vertices are gonna be along a major axis that's parallel to x. Um, I also know that I can reflect the foci and vertices backwards the same distance away. So this actually tells us a couple things. From the center to my vertice, it's three units. And if I go back three units, I'm gonna have negative one, negative three as another vertice. So I'm just gonna write that here, negative one, negative three. And my foci on the other side is one unit away. So this would be positive one, negative three as my other foci. And now I can see this is my major axis. Because this distance from the center to the vertice was three units, I know that the A value that's gonna go in my equation is three units. The distance from the center to the foci are one unit, so this is the C value in my equation. And to find the B value, because we do need to know how wide the ellipse is, I need to use the equation b squared equals a squared minus c squared. So we're finding b squared. We know a, so a squared is nine. We know c is one, c squared is also one. And from this, we can say that b squared is eight and b is gonna be the square root of eight, which is two square root of two. So this is approximately, uh, let's see, two, uh, 2.4. I know it's between two and three because the square root of four is two, and the square root of nine is Three. Actually, this is actually closer, so maybe let's make that 2.8, almost three. So I just need this because I am counting from my center up and down almost three units. So I'm gonna go almost to the x-axis here, and then down 
almost three units this way. And now I can kind of draw in my ellipse. So because I know my A, B, and C values, I can now also write my equation. So I'm going to use the equation for the long ellipse. So if we remember, my center is at 2, negative 3. So in the x part of my equation, I'm going to have x minus 2. That is squared over a squared. So a is 3, a squared is 9. Then I have y minus negative 3, so that would be y plus 3. That's squared, and that's over b squared, which is 8. And in standard form, all of this equals 1. So it's asking us to find the equation, and we've done that, and we're graphing the equation, and we've done that. So now let's look at another example. This would be on the next page. And here it's asking us to analyze this equation. All right, so everything that we had in our last example, um, everything's multiplied out here. So um, we need to arrange this formula so that it is in the proper standard form for an ellipse. So what we're going to do is we're going to reorganize our terms and we're going to take our x terms and put them together. So this would be 4x squared minus 8x. And we're going to take our y squared terms, y squared plus 4y. And I'm going to send my 4 over to the other side. So this would be minus 4. And essentially what I want to do is I want to complete the square for each of these. So before I complete the square, because I have a coefficient here, I want to factor out that 4. And I have x squared minus 2x, because 4 times 2 is 8, and there's a minus. And then plus what number is my perfect square factor? Half of the middle term is negative 1. Square it, you get 1. And now when I factor this, I have 4. And then I have x minus 1 squared. Now working on the y parts. I don't need to factor anything out. So I just need to complete the square. Half of the middle term is positive 2. Positive 2 squared is 4. And by the way, over here, when I added the 1 here, I forgot to add it over on this side, but really I added 1 times 4, and that would be 4. So I need to add 4 here. And on this side, I also added a 4, so I'm going to add another 4. When I factor this, I'm going to have y plus 2, same number that was half of the middle, and then that squared. And now all of this equals minus 4 plus 4. That cancels. I have another plus 4, so that equals 4. But in an ellipse, this needs to equal 1. So I'm going to divide all of the parts by 4. So those cancel, and I'm going to have x minus 1 squared over 1 plus y plus 2 squared over 4, that equals 1. So this is the equation that I'm going to work off of. So when I'm analyzing, I want to find lots of stuff. First of all, we need to find the center. So my center is at the point negative, sorry, positive 1, negative 2. So 1, negative 2 is my center. And as I find all this stuff, we might as well graph it. So 
1, negative 2 is right here. That's my center. I know my a value, this is a squared is 1, so I know that my a value is 1, and my b, ooh, sorry, my b value is 1 because this is actually the short side, so my a value is 2. Longest number underneath the, the y means I'm going to have a long or a tall ellipse. So my A value is two units away from the center. One, two, up and down. So this is a vertex, vertice. And I'm gonna go down two units. Here's another vertice. And now I need to find my foci. All right, so while I'm, before I do that, let's label my vertices are at one, zero and negative, I'm sorry, one, negative one, two, three, four. So one, zero, and one, negative four. My foci are gonna be in, inside here, and I'm gonna find them from using the equation b squared equals uh, a squared minus c squared. I know my b squared value is is 1, this is b squared. My large value underneath here is 4. So essentially this is saying 4 times minus what number is 1. So c squared is going to be 3. And c is going to be the square root of 3. So for my foci, the square root of 3 is between 1 and 4, so this is going to be about 1.7, or 1 and 2, square root of 1 and square root of 4, so I get about 1.7, which, if I put these here, are very close, 1.7 right here, this is my foci, and now I need to name these points, all right? So I know it's over one, and from my set center, I went up the square root of three units. So the x-coordinate is gonna be one, and then from my center, which is negative two, I'm adding and subtracting the square root of three units. So from my center, I go up the square root of three and I go down the square root of three. So this really means one and then the y coordinate is negative two plus the square root of three and negative two minus the square root of three. But for both of these foci, my x coordinate is one. Okay, so this really represents one number. Okay. All right, so we just need to finish drawing the ellipse. I know my b value is one unit, so from my center, I'm gonna go over one, both directions. These are both vertices. And this vertice would be over zero, down two. And this vertice would be over two, down two. Okay, so we got things kind of all over the place here. My foci, my vertices for the minor axis, my vertices for the major axis are here. Um, I've identified my center being one, negative two. Um, so I think I got everything and I just need to kind of connect those dots. So at this point, what should we know about ellipses? Uh, we should know that the foci are along 
the major axis and are on the inside of the ellipse. Okay, we should know that if we know two of the sides using the formula b squared equals a squared uh, minus c squared. So if we know two of these values, we should be able to solve for the other one. And remember that a is the distance from the vertex on the long axis. And B is the distance from the vertex on the minor axis, on the short axis. I should have used major and minor, but long and short works too. And C is the distance from the vertex, oops, from vertex for the foci. And that's on the major axis. And one last thing I think we should know at this point, if you can graph the, the ellipse, you should be able to write an equation for it. So there we have everything we should know about ellipses.